So I want to take just one example to illustrate this point, how things creep in. Um, one time when we had a fellowship, somebody came to me and said, John, are we, uh, are we going to do Teshklik? And I go, what is that? Oh, well, you know, we go to the, uh, a lake or a stream and we throw bread in the water. And this was, was for Yom Teruah that was coming up. And I said, are you out of your mind? Because I knew right away, I'd never heard of this before, but I knew right away Yahweh's saying, this is a spirit of Jewish, um, uh, what do you call it, um, superstition. Now, I never heard of this before, but Yahweh gave me a word right on the spot. He is trying to tell you that he practices Jewish superstition. Mm -hmm. And I said, we don't do that in this assembly. But what it did was it got me to go and investigate and find out what this is. Now, it's not my intent to go through a whole historical record of where this uh, went through in detail or anything like this. It's a concept to show how these things today as it did back then, creeps its way into the body of Messiah. And I later come find out there's a lot of people that celebrate this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It comes from Judaism. It comes from uh, Talmudic teachings. So Tishlik uh, literally means casting away. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the idea is that when Yom, they would call it Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. which is another thing that was borrowed from the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not called Rosh Hashanah in the scriptures. It's Yom Teruah. Yeah. However... Uh, the idea is, is that you're supposed to cast away, get rid of your sins, okay? And so they, I didn't put it in here, but what happened is the Jews, the, the learned Jews of their day, the religious Jews, when they were in captive in Babylon, uh, used to watch the Babylonian priest on this same day now of, of what they call Rosh Hashanah, which is Yom Teruah, the Babylonians celebrated that same day as their feast, okay? And they used to go to a river, uh, the Euphrates, actually, and they used to take, in their case, they used to take stones mm -hmm. and throw them over their shoulders into the water mm -hmm. for superstitious beliefs that somehow that the creator of heaven and earth will give them a blessed harvest the next time around, amongst other things. But anyway, this comes from Babylonian Zoroastrianism, however you say that, <laughs> That's what it kind of looks like. The ancient religion of Iran. And did you know that eating of apples and honey and gefilte fish of the Ashkenazi Jews was borrowed from that religion? So when Passover comes around and other holy days where that is done, okay, it's a tradition of men. But the question is, where did you get that from? This is what we in the body of Messiah have to scrutinize. When people come to us and they, they try to propose something, you just don't take it hook, line, and sinker, okay? So what they used to do is they, take a, they had a custom of making packets from dates, fronds, filled with soil and animal manure. Animal manure, okay? 15 days before Rosh Hashanah. And then what they would do is the manure represents sin, dirty stuff in your life. And then what they do is they toss breadcrumbs or other foods to the fish in the water. Now, this is the Jews now, mm -hmm. mimicking what the Babylonians used to do. Um, either consciously or unconsciously, they feel that the bri bribe of breadcrumbs will stop Satan from accusing them of past misdeeds before the uh, creator of heaven and earth. Underlying the practice is the belief that the creator and demons are always near water. So what they believe, without going into further too much detail, mm -hmm. they believe that demons were in the fish. Mm -hmm. So when they willfully came to the water and the breadcrumbs resembling their sins, because leavened bread, mm -hmm. they would throw it to the fish, and when they eat it, it would satisfy the fish, therefore satisfying the demons in the fish, mm -hmm. so that those demons would not go before Yahweh and accuse these Jews of any evil wrongdoing because they pacified the fish or pacified the demons. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of us out there in the body of Messiah know that if you're practicing this, this is what you do? Because it's a spirit, an unclean spirit, that concocted this idea. 
And yet it's very prevalent in the body of Messiah that people like to go out there and borrow from other faiths and bring it into the body of Messiah and corrupt the seed. So this is one way you disqualify yourself because Yahweh is, as we know, is a jealous Elohim. And he doesn't want you missing, mixing Gentile practices in with his ways. And so it's our job and our responsibility to try to stay as far away from that as possible. But knowledge is power. Yes, it is. If you don't know they're seducing you, you don't know. And I had to go back and tell these people, do you understand what you're doing? And they didn't know. And when I told them, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know. Now, whether they ever stopped, I don't know. But at least they were 